Okay, so I'll admit up front that I was hesitant about doing this diatribe because it's one big sports analogy, and a lot of you hate anything that mentions any sport of any kind. Doesn't matter if the analogy requires any prior knowledge about the sport. Some of you just have this weird, inexplicable prejudice against all things sport, but... I feel like I love a good analogy more than you hate sports talk, so I'm going with it. So one of the things that makes my job tough is that I was never really religious. Unlike many of you, I never had to walk away from a faith, and to the extent that I kind of did, it was gradual and painless. None of my personality was wrapped up in my belief system. None of my family disowned me for my apostasy. I didn't need to make new friends. Of course, I've had to give up things that I felt were integral to my personality. I've alienated family members. I have lost friends. So I can sympathize with all of that stuff to a certain degree. But the one thing I can't really get my head around is the psychological break so many of you had to suffer through. You know, there was like a conscious moment where you had to admit that you didn't believe in this shit anymore. And then you had to decide to walk away from it. And I can't imagine what that was like. But it occurred to me that I can get pretty close through an analogous sports thing. Now, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of American football. Wasn't really by choice. I didn't pick my personal sports denomination, but rather it was handed down to me by family tradition. I didn't come from a hockey family or a basketball family or a baseball family. I came from a football family. My dad was a football fan and his dad was a football fan before him. Super Bowl was sacred at my house. Now, as a kid, I didn't care much for football. I found it boring, and I didn't really understand it. Plus, it tied up the TV all day on Sunday, so it kept me from watching fun stuff. But my dad loved it when I watched football along with him, and the more knowledgeable and interested I became, the prouder he seemed to be of me. And eventually, it got to where I really liked it. But more than the sport itself, I liked the community, the camaraderie. You know, like when you watch football with a group of people, everybody's all into it together. You feed off one another's energy. And like when I met a stranger for the first time, football gave me a a good conversational in. If they were a football fan, I could have an interesting conversation with them for half an hour without needing a personality in any way. But along the way, I stopped really believing in it. You know, when I was a kid, I was 100% invested in every play. But now it's just something that's kind of on in the background while I scroll through Facebook or play Candy Crush. But more than that, as I've gotten older, I noticed a lot of problematic elements to this game that I didn't see as a kid. The exploitation of uncompensated young people, the inherent violence, the sexism, the racism. Problems made all the worse by the sports governing body downplaying well-documented dangers and excommunicating players who stand up for racial equality. Plus... When I was a kid, football players all seemed like moral icons. The teams were always involved with all these charity drives. The players were always visiting kids in hospitals. The league gave out its most prestigious award every year to the player who did the most work in his community. Hell, there's even a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. But as I've gotten older, I realized that, sure, some of the players were really good people, but that had nothing to do with football. A lot of them were also rapists. What's more, the league seems way more committed to ousting people with outspoken views on racial justice than they do to ousting rapists and abusers. So now, here I sit reflecting on my own moral culpability. I've tithed to this thing. I watch the ads on their broadcast, but I've also purchased their jerseys, I've bought tickets to their games. I bear at least some responsibility for the astronomical success of this inherently destructive, ultimately valueless institution. And yet, for whatever reason, I can't make myself walk away from it. Some of it is family pressure. Sure, my dad texts me about Lions games. My mom asks me how the Jaguars are doing when she calls. Some of it's community pressure, right? My, my friends still invite me to watch playoff games with them. I still get roped into fantasy leagues now and again, but mostly it's just momentum. During football season, I watch football games. It's been part of my personality so long that I don't really know who I'd be without it. In other words, I don't have the courage that you did. Now, look, I, I, I get this is not a perfect analogy. It's an insult to the formerly devout atheists to pretend that giving up a sport that I like is akin to the kind of personal overhaul that many of them went through, but the analogy is too good to pass up. Hell, their giant, gaudy facilities are even huge burdens on the local tax base. In in, in a sense, the comparative triviality of what I'm talking about just reinforces my point. I can't muster the nerve to just, you know, go on a hike on Sunday afternoon and not check the scores later. Nobody's going to disown me, and the NFL never promised me eternal life, and yet that ingrained nugget of personality is still too much for me to sever. Just know that if you left religion as an adult, I stand in awe of you. 
you know, when I meet people like you at the conferences and stuff, I, they usually seem embarrassed to admit that they were devout believers in their 20s or 30s or 40s. They act like I'm going to think less of them because of that. So for whatever it's worth, it's the exact opposite. The older you were when you left the church, the harder that journey was. And I have nothing but respect for that. 